In this lesson using AutoCAD, we're going to explore some of the aids that actually help you in assisting your designs. And so your lines or your diagrams or your parts, whatever you're designing, are actually a lot more precise. Um, most of those aids are located on the bottom right hand corner. Uh, what we're going to also explore in this lesson is how to create an isometric drawing. So let's actually start with some of the aids at the bottom right and then we'll make our way to the isometric drawing afterwards. Now by default you're going to notice that you have this button here which is called our, our display snap to grid or snap grid option. By default it's on and so you can see I can toggle the grid on or off. I personally like to have the grid on just so I can align some of my lines if I need to but for the most part um, you know you're not going to be using the grid so much unless you use the next feature which is the snap to grid option. Now by default the snap to grid option is turned off. When you do turn on your snap to grid option though, all of your lines will snap, snap to where the horizontal and vertical grid lines intersect each other. So let's take for example, by default, we're gonna just leave this off. Take our line tool, and you'll notice that when I draw this line, it pretty much goes anywhere that I want it to. Now doing the same thing with the snap to grid options turned on, you'll notice that my grid is getting locked or the line is getting locked to the actual grid itself. So personally, I don't like to actually have the snap to grid option turned on. I think there's better ways of drawing, but what I will do is hit escape and turn this off for now. Now, another useful feature in AutoCAD is orthogonal drawing or this button right over here. What orthogonal drawing allows me to do is it allows me with the line tool or polyline tool for that matter to draw all my lines at 90 degrees. Now this is a useful feature if you're an architect designing buildings, houses, or whatever you can think about. Because the most common angle for floor plans are actually at 90 degrees. Now of course, you do have sometimes angles of 45 or 33 or 22 and a half in certain home designs, but it's not as common. I'm going to turn this orthogonal view off and I think there's still a better way of actually, um, you know, drawing your lines in a certain way which brings us next to polar tracking right over here. So if you haven't already done so, or if it's not already turned on, make sure that you turn on polar tracking and then go to this little drop down arrow right over here. And you'll notice that by default, it's checked off at 45, 90, 135, 180. So it's kind of like orthogonal, but your lines are not locked into those specific angles. So let me just delete this here. Now taking my line tool, you'll notice that every increment 45 degrees presents itself as green ray and this green ray suggests that every angle at 45 it's kind of snapping to it's not locked in but it's snapping to very much unlike the orthogonal view so every line I can draw crisply at 45 without kind of guessing it and kind of messing up my drawing okay so that's polar tracking and by default I typically have that on now the next button I'm going to actually have is what's referred to referred to a snap to object. Now by default it is on, but I've turned it off because I want to show you the difference of how this works when it's turned on or it's turned off. So take my line tool. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a line and then just enter. Now I'm going to go ahead and just draw another line and I'm just going to go and click it right about there. Now at first glance, these lines look like they're connected. However, upon closer inspection and me really zooming in, you can see that I actually have a gap and one line is actually a little bit too long. So why is this a problem? If you're trying to put in hatchings or some sort of filling and the object is not perfectly close, in fact, that hatching will not work properly. Okay, so let me take my hatching. I'm gonna pick an internal point and then all of a sudden I get an error message. So I know that's not gonna work and I have to actually close off my hatching editor. And it's even telling me that, hey, this is where all the uh, points are opened up and you have a bit of a problem. Okay, so what we're gonna now do is we're gonna turn this back on and we're just gonna check the settings right over here by looking at the little drop down. By default, you'll see endpoint, center, or checked off, as well as intersection and extension. I also like to have perpendicular and sometimes tangent if I'm working with circles. Probably don't need that for this lesson, but you know, it's an option if you want to actually explore having them. Sometimes midpoint is also very, very important too. Um, I'm not going to use that right now because sometimes it can be a little tricky depending on the type of drawing that you're going to do. So we'll just leave that unselected. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same experiment where I'm going to draw a line. 
right click and enter and I'm going to draw another line and you'll notice right over here that if I start drawing and I come close you'll see it just sort of snaps too. But when I zoom in you can see that line is perfectly locked tight with each other. And so this feature is very useful and it should be turned on for the majority of the work that you're going to be doing in this case. Now when I go ahead and take a hatching and I fill, I have absolutely no problems and that works really, really well and it creates very clean designs. Okay, so those are some of the aids that assist you in designing an AutoCAD, whether you're an architect, an engineer, a designer of some sort, these are the sorts of tools that they're going to use on a regular basis. So now what we're going to do next is we're going to actually explore what an isometric drawing is and we're going to have some of these aids enabled so we can actually create a very clean isometric drawing. Now what is an isometric drawing? It's a drawing in which all the lines are drawn at 30 degrees. So if I do a search of isometric drawings and I look at these, all of these lines are drawn at 30 degrees, especially if I measure them too. So they're great for mechanical um, engineers if they want to design a part and they want to show that part in 3D on a two-dimensional canvas or blueprint. That's why we'd actually use them. Um, drawings can also be done in a isometric 30 degree viewpoint and, you know, because it creates depth through the illusion of that it's three-dimensional. So let's go ahead and start actually creating this isometric drawing, a very simple one, and we're just going to do a cube just to begin with. So I'm just going to take my line tool here and I'm going to start drawing it. Now you'll notice that I have the value of 10.6, 10.5 and this is a great feature in AutoCAD. So what I plan to do is I'm going to type in the value of 4. In this case it's a default value of 4 inches and then hit enter. There you go, I've just drawn a line that's 4 inches. So I'm just going to go enter just like that and kind of zoom into that line. Now if you recall isometrics are always drawn at 30 degrees. So what I have to do is go down here to my polar tracking settings and instead of actually having it at 4590, 135, 180, I'm going to go one setting lower because isometrics are always drawn at 30. Hence that's why there is the option there. So now I'm going to take my line tool and you can see how this line attaches really nicely with my object snaps turned on and I'm going to just draw this at 30 degrees. Now again I want to have a perfect line at 4 inches and 4 inches by the way, is an imperial measurement, and there's two and a half or 2.54 centimeters in an inch. For whatever reason, Canada kind of flip-flops between metric and imperial. But I've typed in four, and I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard next, and there we go. So that's the start. Now I'm going to copy this line and put this over here, or I could draw it, you know, depending on what I want to do. So I'm going to go copy, click on the line, right-click to advance, specify my base point and just like that. Now to finish the command I can always hit escape or ESC on my keyboard or right click and hit enter. Now let's go ahead here and draw this line just like that. Okay so I have the right side of my cube that's all drawn at isometric or 30 degrees. Okay so next what I plan to do is do the same thing over with my line. And it's really important that you have that green ray extend outwards, otherwise you will not be at 30 degrees and you will not have a proper isometric. Again, I'm going to specify the value at 4. Hit enter. Perfect. Now I could do it a different way too. I could go up 4 like this. And I could also go like 4 like that just to attach it. So as you see, there's lots of different ways of creating something in AutoCAD. Now I can also use a mirror function too if I really wanted to. So I'm just going to delete these lines and I'm going to show you how the mirror function works, which is a great feature and it does things very quickly for you. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the mirror button and so I'm going to select these lines. One, two, and three. Right click to advance. Now it says specify the first point or mirror line. So I'm just going to mirror from this corner right over here and you'll notice that I can get a perfect left to right side or right to left side in this case copied. Now it says do you want to erase the source object? No I definitely do not. I want to keep this original side right here. Okay now I can manually draw on the lines for the top to finish off my cube but what I can also do too is I can use the mirror command. So let's see that one more time. Mirror. I want this line and this line to be mirrored. Right click to advance. I want to specify this is the mirror line 
And then I can just move my mouse here and you can see that click. I have a perfect isometric cube in which all the lines are drawn at 80 degrees. And because I use my object snaps turned on, when I do a hatching, I'll have no problems filling the object itself. So I could take a color here, close that off. Um, I could do another hatching with a different pattern if I wanted to, or maybe even a solid pattern. I don't like this fill. I'm going to change this actually. Okay, so that's a very simple isometric cube. Try out and try to create your own isometric cube and pause the video at this point. Okay, so hopefully after having a chance to pause the video, uh, we're going to go on to something a little bit harder and hopefully that your isometric cube looks like mine or looks even more awesome than mine with different hatchings. But I've copied an image of something called the impossible cube. So I'm just going to paste it in. So control C and then control V. So you'll notice that you got this really cool optical illusion of this cube and you're not too sure whether you know the lines or parts of it are inside or on the outside and it looks kind of cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw this cube at a 30 degree angle. Um, now be warned here if you try to trace out this cube this will not work because these angles are actually not 30 degrees they're more like 28 degrees or 27 degrees and and you're just going to mess it up and you'll have to go back and redo it. So we're going to actually create this and I'm going to get you started on that here. All right. Now, another thing that you need to know about this impossible cube, it's actually an impossible rectangular prism. This side here on the left is slightly longer than this side here on the right. And because you have this difference, then what's going to happen is, um, you know, it allows you to create a little gap in the center. And that's how you know that you're doing this right. So we're going to get this started together here. So I'm going to take my line tool and I'm just going to start drawing. Don't forget to have this at 30 degrees. Your line must snap so you have a green ray extends. Okay, so that line is this line right here. And I'm going to go upwards right about like that. And then I'm going to come down about like that. Now here's where students or individuals working on AutoCAD kind of get tripped up. So what they'll do is they'll say, okay, great, I'm going to draw this line and I'm going to connect it like that. Bit of a problem with that. You can see that this line is not completely vertical. So there's a way around that. I'm just going to hit Control Z to back that up. Oh, it did the, unfortunately it did, undid the whole thing. So let me go Control Y to put it all back. I'm going to click on this line here and delete it. Using my line tool, what I plan to do is I plan to go ahead and go down. And I'm just going to just kind of maybe go right about here. So I don't want to force my lines together. What I have to do is I have to make sure that I'm drawing perfectly vertical or the other lines at 30 degrees. So I do have a gap because I don't want this line to connect from here to here because it messes everything up. So I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to extend it outwards. Don't forget it has to be drawn at 30 degrees. The green ray will show you that. And I've just connected this line. Now this one's a little long. So I'm going to click on this and I want to scale this back. Just like that. Okay, great. So I have the outline of my impossible cube right over here. Now I'm going to work on this side next. Now, if you recall, this impossible cube is actually an impossible rectangular prism. So when I draw this line over here, I'm not going to have it quite as long. Okay, now I'm going to go up like this and enter. Now I did this line longer on purpose because. If I didn't, you might try forcing it like that. And we know that's not 30 degree angle. That's 30 degree angle, but you can see it doesn't connect properly to kind of the center point of our object. So I'm gonna take my line tool here and connect it right there. So zooming in here, let's grab this line and scale it back by the grip so it all connects. Perfect. Okay, next I can start working on this little strut or support here. So I'm going to draw roughly like that. And again, if I come over here, 
Be careful because this is not 30 degrees. So I'm going to pull this line all the way past it on purpose. Look at it. Oh yeah, there's a gap here. And now I can actually just go ahead and take this line, grab the grip, and scale it back. So you can see how this is actually starting to take shape and how it looks good. Now your task for this lesson, or part A of the series here, is to actually recreate this impossible rectangular prism. And in doing so, make sure everything's up 30 degrees and put in some hatchings as well to create the effect. Something to keep in mind too, is sometimes these lines are gonna actually appear in front and that's no problem because what's gonna happen is eventually if I have a line coming across over here, I might take this line and just pull it back and then draw another line to connect to the side over here. It's kind of a process where you gotta sort of like look at it and you gotta say, okay, I'll draw all my lines first and then I'll scale some lines back and then redraw some of them. So I kind of create the optical illusion uh, right over here. So give that a, a try. And that's the first part of the lesson. Now, the next part of the lesson is we're going to look at some of the other modify commands in the next video. And we're going to actually look at oblique drawings. So good luck with that and give it a try.